So I'll click on this, I'll open this in a new tab, and you can see this is the start of the book. So if we start with the forward, there's some information there about how Linux from scratch came about just over 20 years ago. Uh, the next page is who uh, Linux from scratch is intended for. Um, you'll notice I won't be going through all this stuff in detail. It's something that you can read in your own time. And I always advise that you read the book uh, first before you attempt to sit in front of the terminal and type some commands in. Just get to know the layout of the book, how it's organized, what what's going to be done. So you've got an idea of um, what's coming up when you actually sit at the terminal and type commands in. Um, it's mentioned here about LFS t architectures. It's primarily information for 32-bit and 64-bit um, AMD stroke Intel CPUs. Um, it does say that with some modifications, you can get it to run on PowerPC and ARM CPUs. Um, it, it's probably an advanced topic to consider doing something like that. So if you don't normally use AMD stroke Intel machines, um, it might be worth trying to get hold of one to to build um, Linux from scratch. Although, obviously, if you're building on a virtual in a virtualized environment, then assuming that virtualized environment can uh, provide a, a VM that emulates, say, Intel or AMD, then obviously that's something that you can do if you're not on an Intel or AMD machine. Prerequisites, there's some information there about how software is built and so on. If you've never built from source, it's worth reading this to get a gist of how things work. Give you, um, it says a basic uh, level of skills, which this book requires. This page is all about the standards that LFS tries to adhere to. Adhere to. Um, there's several standards here, POSIX, the FHS file system hierarchy standard and the LSB, the Linux standard base. And it shows you which packages adhere to those particular standards. Um, and there's some here which aren't supplied by Linux Scratch or BLFS but are needed to satisfy LSB requirements. So. Although at the end of Linux from scratch we've adhered to the standards, it does say that you'll need these extra ones to make it fully compliant with the LSB um, standards. Then there's a page uh, giving rationale for packages in the book. I imagine I've had some people question why such and such a package is in the book. So they give some reasons as to why they're in here. Most of these are absolutely necessary to get a system built. Others are maybe convenience packages such as Vim. You probably don't need really need Vim to um, build Linux from scratch, but it could be handy to tweak some config files while you're building it or, or just after you've built it. So, um, yeah, that's an example of where some people might have questioned why. It's not all um, everybody's favourite but it's a pretty standard editor, so I guess that's why it's been chosen. It's, all, it's always been in the book as far as I, I can remember. Um, and I've been building since quite early on, not, not the earliest versions, but at least for 20 years I've been building Linux from scratch. Um, and I can't ever remember there being another editor, except for maybe Ed, possibly. Typography, so this gives you an idea of how the book's laid out and what you can expect to see in terms of the fonts and typefaces used. Um, and it gives some explanations there about, um, it tells you this format of the text. So it's in a gray box and it's in bold and it's in a monospace font. This is the command that you type in on the terminal to get something done. Um, some commands are split over two lines and you can identify them generally. Mo most commands are split over one line. Uh, some don't always uh, end like that. Uh, but they'll end in a backslash to indicate that this, this command carries on the next line. Um, 
yeah, it does say the backslash must be followed by an immediate return. Um, otherwise, spaces and characters can create incorrect results. This one shows the output of the a command that's, as it's appeared on the screen. You'll see things like emphasis um, in italics, links are obvious. Um, then things like this. This is like a what I would call a single command, but it's split over several lines, but it hasn't got the backslash. So you've actually got several aspects to this part of the command. This, this is actually what they call a here, here document. Um, and what it does, it creates the text that's specified in this part of the command is put into this file here. Um, but as you can see, it's over several lines, but it hasn't got the backslash. So that's why I say that most of the commands will end with a backslash, a backslash if they're split over the line, but some like this one, you won't see the backslash. But as you, you'll be able to see what I'm doing, you'll, you'll see that um, which parts of the command I copy. One thing I do tend to recommend is if you've never done Linux from scratch before, or if you're still quite new to it, is copy and paste the command at a time so you can see what the output is of that command, um, rather than just copying and pasting the whole bulk of you know several commands which some of these boxes do encapsulate um, if you do that and you get an error you either might miss it embedded in some other output um, or yeah you, you might just miss it basically or you, you might be unsure as to which command uh, produced the error so um, again I'll, I'll be where I remember where I'll um, where I'm putting commands in I'll try to do one at a time so that you get an idea of what, what the commands are if you're unsure. Um, some more things here about text that's replaced um, and encapsulating text and text and so on. And this last one refers to a specific manual page if you want to refer to the uh, manual pages and it describes a bit more about that there. Structure, I won't go through this in too much detail but it shows the layout of the book. There's five parts the introduction which we're in at the moment um, preparing for the build so that's preparing the environment the host environment we need a, a system that's running it's like a chicken and egg situation we need a, a chicken to produce the egg so this part two is the chicken part if you like and we're going to be building up the egg to produce another chicken um, and there's actually they've now split it into two stages uh, it's kind of still three stages um, but I suppose strictly speaking, it is two stages now to, to build the system. Um, yeah, they've actually got three stages here, but it's in two parts now. The first part is to build a cross tool chain. I'll come across that and explain that a bit more uh, when we come to it. And then there's a temporary some temporary tools that are built that are tools that are used in the final system, but they need to be built temporarily because they're going to be built slightly differently to the final system so we build them and then in the final system the actual live system if you like which is in this part here uh, those those tools are rebuilt appendices there's lots of information about the uh, programs that are built the tools the programs that are supplied by each packages and so on there's lots of information in the appendices Next bit about errata and security advisors, advisories on the website. There's, um, it will currently be empty because obviously this um, release has just been published today. But over the lifetime of this release, which will be the next six months, I imagine, um, there will be errata's issued or any security advisors, advisories that come up for a package. So if you are building this several months down the line, say, you know, May or June or something prior to the next version appearing, it's worth following these links to see what um, updates there have been if you're particularly concerned about security or bug fixes. Um, if you're doing this purely for an educational point of view, which is Linux from scratch's primary objective. Um, you probably don't need to worry about that. It will it pro possibly would complicate things a little bit more. Um, so yeah, if you're just doing this in a virtual environment, you're going to do it, build it, test it, and then you know flatten it, get rid of it. Then you probably don't really need to worry about it too much. 
So introduction, let's move on to that, how to build, build a Linux from scratch system. This goes into a bit more detail about individual chapters, what happens in each one. Um, basically chapters two, three, four and five are preparing the host system and the target system. So we primarily need a host system that has got the tools we need to build Linux from scratch. We then go on to creating the environment for the host system, which involves mainly preparing the disk and partitioning it, formatting it, and then creating a user that we can start compiling uh, the initial packages with. Then chapter five, we go on to building the initial tool chain. The tool chain generally refers to these three packages. It can also include the kernel Linux. So when people refer to the tool chain, they're either referring to binutils, GCC and glib, or they're referring to binutils, GCC, glib, and the Linux kernel. They're all very closely tied together. And generally, um, you can't update one without the other. You can sometimes if it's a small jump in version, version number, but generally you wouldn't, um, for example, update GCC without updating the others too far ahead um, because, as I say, there's an interoperability between all these three packages. They rely on functions and features between each other. They're very closely tied, even though they do different jobs. And as I say, the kernel is involved with this because of things like the kernel headers, um, uh, amongst other things. Um, so this builds an initial tool chain, which uses cross compilation techniques. We'll cover that a bit more as we come to it. Um, and then chapter six, we compile some basic utility or cross compile some basic utilities with the tool chain we've just created. And then we enter a true environment, which is a environment that remaps the root um, file system and also protects us from the host environment. So if we were to do something damaging within a true environment, we're protected from actually damaging the system. So it's a, it's a good thing to be in that environment. Um, it says down here, in fact, this effort is to isolate the new system from the host distribution. It may seem excessive, but um, as it mentions here, there's some details which we'll come to eventually. Uh, once those uh, remaining tools are built, we've then got everything in place to build the final system. And the complete final system is built in Chapter 8. So everything prior to that, everything prior to Chapter 8 is preparation for building the system. And I guess in terms of the amount of work involved, it's probably about 30% of the work involved is preparing to get to chapter eight. Chapter eight is probably about 60% roughly of the work involved, in, in certainly in terms of compiling anyway. The remaining chapters are about configuring the system, setting it up for booting, configuration files such as networking, um, and tweaking and basically getting the system ready to make it bootable. What's new since the last release? Well, it goes through all the packages that have been upgraded there. If you're interested, a couple of patches have been added and one patch has been removed. You can see this Z standard was 152 in the previous release. The Z standard in this release is 154. So obviously that has made those patches um, obsolete, I assume. If they were fixes, they've been incorporated into the new version. And that's why that patch is not, not required anymore. Change logs. So there's a list of all the changes that have been made to the book, if you're interested. And go to resources. So an FAQ, if you're interested in learning more, which um, yeah, is very advisable if you're new to Linux from scratch. There's an FAQ link there. Mailing lists, there's mailing lists for help if you do need help. Um, I always advise people to go to these sources first. Uh, what I would say are like standard help places. Um, these are either people are involved with Linux from scratch or people maybe, um, you know, maybe got involved with the packages or 
you know, they're probably closer to Linux from scratch than I am. I'd, I'd just do this as a sort of something on the side. Um, it's not really something I'm involved in, with to say that I'm an expert in anything. Um, generally, if people do ask for help on the channel, I will try to help. But invariably, I, the reply that I'll give is that, you know, if you can't identify the solution, if I can't identify it, if you can't identify it, the best thing is to backtrack um, to some point in the build where you can start again um, without any doubts of uh, something that you've done wrong. So it either might be starting from scratch or maybe starting chapter eight again, for example. Um, it's normally the safest thing rather than go digging around uh, because if it's something you've missed out there's a chance it might have affected a package that's affected the package that's broken so you could go back to that package that has already been affected but you've not gone back further to the package or, or the the uh, problem that's affected the middle package if you like that makes sense uh, what i'm trying to say is that an error early on could have impact several stages down the line uh, it might just be sitting there causing problems and you don't know about it until uh, quite a way in so you might go back so far but it's not far enough it's not the point where the error is introduced so um, I do recommend to start again a lot of the time purely because it's about a learning process and by restarting you're going through the process you're relearning you're redoing things and getting to know various aspects about Linux from scratch just by redoing it again so it might seem a waste of time, believe me, it's not. I've, I've, I can remember when I first built Linux from scratch and made a few mistakes. I just restarted from scratch and eventually you get to a point where you, you gain confidence and knowledge in it and you can just pile your way through it um, and end up with a successful build. Um, so yeah, there's various uh, bits of information. There's an uh, internet relay chat there as well which you can join um, and there's some mirror sites there as well for getting um, required packages sometimes if you download the packages sometimes after, sometime after the release of the book uh, the packages are updated one or two of the projects delete old packages quite quickly so uh, these mirror sites can be quite helpful um, one I always recommend using because it's quite comprehensive is um, it's not actually on here is it oh yes it's these file mirrors so these are mirrors of the website um, and these yeah these files mirrors so if you can't get hold of a package these are really useful the one I tend to use is this one here um, it seems to be updating very quickly um, and very comprehensive it's got lots of um, old stuff on there as well if you're looking to build some some of the older versions of Linux from scratch or even cross Linux from scratch which doesn't appear to be touched for a number of years now um, some of the other mirrors don't get updated very quickly or they're incomplete in some respects. I would imagine though, um, having said that, for the later versions, uh, they should be up to date. Let's have a look at that one out of interest. Linux from scratch. Yes, it's got, oh yeah, this has got old stuff on as well actually. Uh, maybe these uh, mirrors are being updated better than they used to be. You can see 11.3 there and there's all the packages that we'll be downloading. So, yeah, that could be quite useful. Um, so let's go on. Yeah, there's a bit more about help there. Um, it tells you how to report problems. Uh, this is the sort of information you want to report if you get an error. Don't just report the last line because that, that's meaningless. You'll get that line for virtually any error. Um, you need to see what's gone gone before. Uh, like I say, if you do report an error on my channel, I'll, I'll do my best to um, answer it and come up with a solution, but I'm by no means an expert um, on Linux from scratch, and I'm certainly not an expert on specific pa packages. 